Tonight, very briefly and in the simplicity of the word, I'll be teaching on the apostolic church. We had no discussion. He never told me anything and only to come and hear him say the first thing about the church. The apostolic church. What God is doing with the encounter Jesus, you will soon see happening all across the world. There is a pattern, there is a model that is being set up here with clarity. The apostolic church does not talk about a denomination. The apostolic church talks about a dispensation in God's agenda for the church. It was first spoken about in Joel chapter 2 verse 28 to 30 and then repeated again in Acts chapter 2 verse 15 all the way to verse 30. In Joel chapter 2 verse 28 the Bible says it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Verse 29, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids, in those days there is a dispensation coming. That I will pour out my spirit. Verse 30, it says, and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood, fire, pillars of smoke. Now when the day of Pentecost was fully come and Peter after being filled with the Holy Ghost began to minister, this was what he started with. These are not drunken with wine as you suppose, seeing that is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken. We are in that this is that moment. This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days. And you will agree that all the events and all the prophetic indications reveal that we are in the later part of the last days. So this is another, this is that moment. It shall come to pass in the last days. Hear the Lord, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants, on my handmaids, I will pour out in those days my spirit. And they shall prophesy. The apostolic church. It was one year ago, very specifically, and I've never had the privilege or opportunity to share this, but in a house like this. He said the apostolic days are back again one year ago. The apostolic days are back again. In Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 5 he said I will walk a walk in your days. That even if it were told you it would be difficult to believe I will walk a walk in your days. And so this apostolic church will rule in the midst of these apostolic days. And hear this, you've heard it before, but this will help us and remind us to what these characteristics of these apostolic days are. And what a joy, the kind of things you hear about here, the, the depth of the word you hear here are not common. Number one, the apostolic days will be days of the apostolic encounters. You look at all the songs that were played, they point to this. The apostolic days are the days of apostolic encounters where people will go beyond what they are taught in church to what they are shown in their secret place. These are the days of Bethel and Penel. Bethel signifying the house of God. 
Genesis 28, 17 to 22. But also Peniel, the place of the face of God. Genesis 32, verse 24 to 30. These days will be days of apostolic encounters. My brother Dunsi Oyeko says it this way, this is Jacob. That, that statement comes from a depth. People will go beyond what they call church doctrines to church realities. We are in the days where the previous generation where many of us have come from are so used to our church doctrines. This person said this. That person said that. This person said that. We have left those days now to God said. This will be days of apostolic encounters. Where people will be literally caught into the third heavens. They will be shown things that it will take them time to... To be able to share it because they have left the realm where others are. Apostolic encounters. If you don't know the characteristics of these days, you may not know what to expect. So in the midst of an assembly like this, there are people encountering God beyond what is being taught. There are people seen into the realms of the spirit. There are others that saw what I am teaching now before I came. The days of apostolic encounters. Number two. Characteristic of the apostolic days that will come to the church that will rule in those days. Number two characteristic is that the apostolic days are the days of apostolic power. This will not be new to us at the encounter of Jesus. Psalm 110 verse 3. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. In Acts chapter 4 verse 33. Acts chapter 4 verse 33. And with great power gave the apostles witness. You see, people are tired of doctrines that lack power. With great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them. So these are not just days of apostolic encounters. These encounters will birth apostolic power. It will be like we are back in the days of the Acts of the Apostles and that's what we are seeing with all the various invasions and the things that God is doing through this ministry. These are the days of apostolic power. You know, the Bible says, tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Okay, something is going to happen here tonight. Anyone that is under any oppression of the devil, in the authority of the name of Jesus, I'll count to three now. This is an interruption. It wasn't part of anything planned. Anyone under any oppression of the devil, wherever it has come from, however long it has been, we are not here to teach what will not happen. I decree the authority of the name of Jesus here on ground and those watching online. As I count to three, those chains are broken. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. One. Two. Three. Chains break in the name of Jesus. Just watch it. It has happened. <laughs> oh, Takabai. Oh, Temene Kagai. Kabai. Totekele Karai. Just allow the spirit move. It won't take him long. But today is your day of liberty. Loose in the name of Jesus. I vow never to take the glory. Poro I come in any eye. That person that seems like an image has followed you. 
There seems to be a demonic presence around you anywhere you go. Chain is broken. Chain is broken. Those days are over. A new dispensation has arrived. In Jesus' name. Take your seat. Number three. These days. This is not new to us here. They are the days also of apostolic persecutions. The encounters will lead to the power. <laughs> but I tell you, we've stepped into the days of apostolic persecutions. It goes beyond social media rubbish. To the days where a people must be cultured to expect persecution. They are the days of apostolic persecutions. Acts chapter 5 verse 18. And they laid their hands on the apostles and put them in common prison. After the manifestation of power. The apostolic days are the days of apostolic persecutions because the encounters and the power will attract the persecution. There are dimensions you step into that you become a threat. As long as you are here, there is no problem. But as you step into dimensions and Jesus so trained, tutored, tested, and trusted the apostles before the early church broke loose that they should expect persecutions. And so when persecutions came, they rejoiced. Number four. These are the days of apostolic invasions. <laughs> it's not a new language here at all. When you hear that there is an apostolic invasion of encounter Jesus to a place, you better understand what it means. It's because we are in the apostolic days. And one of the characteristics is that God will take men, take women and catapult them to places. And there is an ought to be an invasion into the place. And this is scriptural. And so you find out In Acts chapter 19 verse 10. That all of Asia heard the word. One man. Paul the apostle entered the place. There was an invasion there. And within a few years. All of Asia. Heard the word. So when we go to Kuji. And go to Jos. And go to Benin. And go to Kaduna. And, and, and it's an apostolic invasion. We better release adequate prayers. And spiritual backup for it. It's an invasion and it is a characteristic of the apostolic days. In Acts chapter 16 verse 20 it got to a point that they began to exclaim, these are the people these men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city. You can't enter a place and the territory remains the same. There is, there is, there, and there ought to be an alteration of the spiritual climate of the place. These men stepped in here and they have troubled our city. They have uprooted things we have hidden under the ground. Apostolic invasions. In Acts chapter 17 verse 6, I love this description. These men have turned the world upside down and they have come here again. Apostolic invasions. And number five characteristic of this apostolic days is apostolic discipleship. And I love what I know goes on here. A generation has missed adequate, proper discipleship.
Ishi. In the midst of the multitudes, we must never lose sight of the disciples. Where men and women will be tutored, will be taught, will be trained, will be tested, will be discipled. It's not the number of the disciples, it's the impact that they carry. And so in these apostolic days, you want to ensure that you are not part of the multitude, but part of the disciples. We may be in a large gathering, but ensure you are well positioned and your heart is well set to be properly discipled. Everything you hear is an opportunity to be trained. Tuesday we gather. Be there. Be trained. Be discipled. This is critical. In Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 to 20. It said, go and make disciples. Make disciples. We are called to go win the lost. As we do, we are also called to go and make disciples of all nations. So there you have five characteristics of the apostolic days among many others that you've been taught over the years. Days of apostolic encounters, days of apostolic power, days of apostolic persecution, days of apostolic invasions, and days of apostolic discipleship. Now, knowing that these are the days, apostolic days that we've stepped into, it's important to look at the DNA of the apostolic church. The church that we rule in the apostolic days will take maybe about six or seven of them and in the midst of it will allow the Holy Ghost to do what he wants to do. So we call this the apostolic church DNA. Number one, a church with one owner, architect and builder. The apostolic church that will rule in these apostolic days will be a church with one owner, one architect, and one builder. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 10. Hebrews 11, verse 10. For he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Matthew 16, 18. I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will build. So there is, it must be a church with one owner. It is not a man's church. Encounter Jesus does not belong to Apostle Oropo. One owner. One architect. One builder. If he's truly the owner, the architect, and the builder, the one who is the set man over the place will never have a problem decreasing that he increases. And that's what we enjoy here. The church who has one owner, one architect, one builder will not mind tarrying in his presence and allowing him invade and interrupt beyond the program. We struggle with the Holy Ghost moving in many places because, permit me, he has to take permission from the set man. But if he's truly the owner, the architect, and the builder, he moves as he desires and we follow. Number two characteristic of the apostolic church or what you will call the DNA of the apostolic church is that it is a church of prayer. A church of prayer. For we will give ourselves only to prayer 
and to the ministry of the word. Acts chapter 6 verse 4. A church of prayer. The apostle said, Luke's gospel chapter 11 verse 1 to 4 said, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. It is a church that will be too taught, trained, and will go through the practicability of prayer. A church of prayer. In fact, the revival that we desire to see and that has been prophesied in this later part of the last days will require prayer. Leonard Robin Hill said, Revival delays because prayer decays. This church will need to tutor a generation in not only the act of prayer, ACT, but the art of prayer, ART. There, there, there needs to be a school of prayer where people are taught of the posture of the heart. That connects you to the heavenlies. That releases the opening of portals. A church of prayer. That will go beyond the transactional level of prayer. Lord, I prayed for a car. You have given me a car. No, but going to the realms where you begin to interact with the heavens. Where the things of this earth do no longer matter to you. I see Jesus seated on his throne. <laughs> Do you want to get to this realm at all? I see the spirit fixing his again. on such a church that people will tarry and, and I love what I see happening. We come into a place like this and there is no rush. Cultivating the presence of God requires time. <laughs> and Jesus prayed and the fashion of his countenance was all tarry. is not meant to just change things. It's meant to change people. There are dimensions you pray that when you descend, it is clear that you have seen the face of God. Prayer. Prayer. This kind of apostolic church will need to begin to take nations and begin to pray for them. Nations. There are people taking nations and praying for them. There are others praying for bread and butter. Hmm. And when the disciples who went with Jesus to the mountain of transfiguration saw the altering of his face and the interactions that were taking place, he said, It is good for us to stay here. <laughs> Let's stay here. Let's build a tabernacle for you, for, for Moses and so on. Let's stay here. Ah. Jesus said, I just brought you to one of my interactions. This is not all. No wonder a great while before the day he prayed. Deep into the night he prayed. There are many things that happened in, on the prayer altar of Jesus that are not documented anywhere.
And so the apostles, learning that, went to the upper room and began to pray. For they were told to tarry in Jerusalem till they are endued with power from on high. Not tarry, eating and drinking. Tarry in his presence, praying. Is your prayer focused on your need or his desire in the earth now? And I'm saying this because it goes beyond the public sphere of prayer. That's very good. But if we are not careful, we'll be raising a very lazy generation that waits to come to Mount Zion to pray. But that's not our case here. We are taught, we are too taught, we are cultured that prayer is a lifestyle. Everywhere we go. Number three, if you are following, is a church of the word. And we, <laughs> this is not new. There are dimensions God will open up to, to you in scriptures that are not normal. I've listened to many of the teachings here, and you are wondering what depth is this? The word. For we'll give ourselves wholly to prayer and to the ministry of the word. In prayer, we speak to God. In the word, God speaks to us. So it is a complete interaction. It's like bread and butter. It's like food and water. Prayer and the word. That's why you see that when the church was born, it began with prayer. And immediately on the day of Pentecost, we see the word. Peter stood up boldly and began to read out scriptures like he had eaten them because he had eaten them. In Acts chapter 13, as the church began to explode and things began to happen, verse 41, Acts 14, 13, sorry, Acts 13, 41. We see here, behold ye despise us and wonder and perish for we will walk a walk in your days. That's the scripture I read before. Habakkuk 1 5. I walk you walk in your days. Uh, you you know why shall believe. Do a man declare it unto you. Verse 42. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought, besought that these words be preached unto them the next Sabbath. That is, we can't end this message now. It has come with such depth. Please repeat it next week. They began to beg. The menu was so sumptuous. Repeat it again. We need to digest this one first. And the Bible says, and on the next Sabbath day. So that means the word preached the previous Sabbath travel. That the next Sabbath day, almost the entire city came back to hear a repeated message. We read Acts 13, 44, but that's not where it began. There was a message pre the previous Sabbath. You can't say the next Sabbath without the previous Sabbath. If something happened the next Sabbath, then what happened the previous Sabbath? There was a word preached. The apostolic church is a church of the word. Rooted in the word. Grounded in the word. Not the letter of the word, but the spirit. For the letter kill it, but the spirit give it life. The word. Acts 19 and I believe verse 20. So mightily grew the word. And it prevailed. The word. Number four. that will represent the DNA of the apostolic church is a church of unity. There is such an urgency in the heart of the owner of the church. If it is my church, in the midst of your differences, let there be unity. In Acts chapter 1 verse 14, the Bible says they were in one accord. They were in unity. Acts chapter 2 verse 1 on the day of Pentecost they were in one accord unity what will happen to the apostolic church if we come together if the fightings cease 
the competition ceases. The apostolic church is a church of unity. Now, this is not a church that accepts what is not of God. So don't get it wrong. But in the midst of our denominations that there be unity. And that's what apostolic movements like these have birth. People from all kinds of denominations who are tired of the fightings and just want Jesus. I came for Jesus. I came for no man. But I came for Jesus. And so God birth encounter Jesus. Belonging to no denomination but belonging to him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? These are the kind of things we'll be seeing in these apostolic days of the apostolic church. If we believe that this is the word of God, our understanding may differ, but let unity reign. A church of unity. Number five, the end of the apostolic church is a church of purity. <laughs> purity. For who shall ascend to the heel of the Lord? He that had a clean hand and pure heart and will not put his hand to vanity. A church of purity that will embrace purity. And so in Acts chapter 5 verse 1 to 10 or verse 1 to 11, we see there that when the first church, the early church was born, the early church was born in the Acts of the Apostles, we see that just for lying, Ananias and Sapphira died. And in the words of Peter, why have you lied to the Holy Ghost? Why have you put it in your heart to do an impure thing to him? We are back in those days where those who have been screaming his name and doing something evil behind will soon be exposed. The apostolic church is a church of purity. In the days of Smith, who was what? He will enter a train without speaking to anybody. And people will run out of the train. And they ask them what happened. They say, as soon as he entered, he made me feel unclean. No discussion. Purity is not just what we should teach, but what can be seen. Purity is not just what should be taught, but what can be touched. That purity may reign. The reason why the world is here to fear the church is our talk does not match our work. There is a dimension of purity that the apostolic church will begin to walk in that the world will fear the church. But today across the nations, the church is one of the most polluted places you can go. But those days are over. Purity. Number six. Hokabayai. Hmm. It's a church of intimacy. If you are used to that here, a church of intimacy. I'm revealing to you and unveiling to you things that are in the very fabric of the movement that we belong to that we may not be aware. Intimacy. This church, the apostolic church, will speak a lot about intimacy. Will encourage personal intimacy. No wonder Paul the Apostle will say that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Intimacy. John 10, 30 I and my father are one. Intimacy. In the midst of all the publicity, there must be intimacy with the father. Number seven, 
The apostolic church will be a church on a mission. The mission of the apostolic church will be in the very fabric of the great commission. Every apostolic church will run with a vision within the great commission. And so in Mark 16, 15 to 16, go ye into all the world. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20, go ye make disciples. So it's talking about winning souls, making disciples. There is no apostolic church that will not have the great commission as its major focus. Yes, a specific mission within the great commission. If it doesn't lead to the salvation and the discipleship of the body, and something is missing. Finally, number eight. Hmm. The apostolic church, I trust God to open your eyes to see what I'm about to share, will be a church on fire. Not fire because we say fire, but fire in the real sense of it. For it will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Matthew chapter 3 verse 11 to 12. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, birth in the early church, one of the characteristics there was they sat upon their head, cloven tongues as of fire. There are individuals here tonight that will be literally set on fire. There, there are days that certain things happen. I didn't used to be like this before. But then a day came. There was such an interruption upon my life. An interception of the regular order. And something came upon me and my life changed. I'm trusting God for at least 10 people here tonight. That will have such direct encounters with fire. Not fire in the sense of just screaming fire. No, but such so he says his, his word was like fire shot up in my bones. There will be such a deposit upon your life that you will never forever recover from. In the days that we are in, it's abnormal to be normal. Something must come upon a person that turns him into another man. Speaking about the encounter with Saul, he said, and all these things shall come to pass, and afterward you shall be turned into another man. We've heard that severally that there are capacities within us. There are abilities to stretch beyond we have ever stretched. But it takes one day of an encounter. There are several things that will be happening here tonight. We've said we're in the apostolic days. We've given the characteristics of those days. We've said it is the apostolic church that will rule in the apostolic days. Now I want you to go beyond just looking at the church as a group of people, but taking your part within the apostolic church. I must be a man and woman on fire. Oh, I just heard him again. There are women here that are hungry to carry mantles of the ancient. I know what I'm talking about. There are women here very hungry. One of the things the Lord said to me is he said that this will be the year of Deborah's. There are women very, it will come upon you in a very, very strange way. Now, if you are one of such people, I ask that there will be such an encounter tonight. Such a strange encounter tonight that you will never, ever recover from it. There are also men here that will carry such mantles because mantles don't go to heaven. They have no use in heaven. There will be such a deposit upon you here tonight. Let there be interruptions of the spirit and he will do a quick walk in this place. In the authority of the name of Jesus, there are evangelistic mantles that will be deposited upon individuals here tonight the mantles of bonke the mantles of, of such individuals that have walked upon this earth the, the mantles of Billy Graham people that will that will that will have governments under their tutorship apostolic 
mantle such as the one upon the said man of this house is also available. Our Elijahs don't have to die to carry what they carry. I pray upon somebody here tonight that has received this word on the apostolic church and the apostolic days that whatever part that you are meant to play within this era, I decree the grace, the mantles, the helps required to rest upon you. Now lift your hands. It's coming like wildfire upon a number of you right now, wherever you may be. It's coming like wildfire upon a number of you right now. Keep your hands lifted up if you can. Within these apostolic days, within this apostolic era, within these days of the apostolic church, your role, your part to play, the mantles that are required. Take it right now. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, fire, fire, all of it, just like the day of Pentecost, fire, all of me, just like the day. but I believe this is for somebody here the Lord also said the ninth characteristic please just hear me if you can is that the apostolic church will have what we call apostolic partnerships and what that means if you see how it was in the early church Paul will go with a partner it will become a regular occurrence for people from different ministries to partner together to have this work done. Not everybody can catch what I'm saying, but if you are the one, you know it is you I'm talking about. There will be apostolic partnerships where there will be massive apostolic invasions and two people, three people from different, different ministries will get to the point where they partner together on every apostolic mission. 
Because there is a specific mission for everyone within the Great Commission. God will send two, three apostles with apostolic mantles to, to, to invade the location. There will not be competition within the ministry. They will step in each one knowing his way and none will break their rank. They will step into a territory. There are things no one can do alone. So Paul had his own partners. Who will go into a territory and, and sweep the territory. No wonder they said the gods are come to us. Not the God is come to us. The gods are come to us in the likeness of man. The days that we are in. The apostolic church will lose sight of competition. There are mantles deposited. I, I saw a picture some years ago that stirred my heart. Apostle, I saw a picture with Kenneth Hagin, T.L. Osborne, and Ora Roberts together holding themselves. When will those days come back again? When we stand together as partners and invade the territory, and we need to do this with urgency. We don't have the time for fancy. It is a mission with urgency. Where a year will come and people with apostolic mantles will sit together and plan invasions. The year hasn't started yet. They plan the invasions for, and everyone says, I, I subject my calendar to this one. One, two, three, four, five meetings. We're going to, into territories, invade them for weeks. It's a new era. But there are people that must be mantled for it. <laughs> I invite you to your coronation ceremony tonight. Where, where there are things that will drop upon you. It's not you who came in here that is departing from here. There will be a clarity of a mandate. A clarity of a mantle. A clarity of a mission. A clarity of an assignment for this end time. And if I possible allow a time will come where we would, would possibly pray together for such individuals, for such a deposit. For such a deposit. Every time we've ministered together, it, it's been a difference in, in the... <laughs> this is about one year now, or a year and a half. There is something he carries. Many things he carries. And when there is a combination, there is impact. One shall chase a thousand. It is not an addition night, it is a multiplication of impact. I'd like you to get ready tonight. What God asks that I teach is with simplicity. So that everybody can capture it and catch it. Who is ready for it? And it is not a message for encounter Jesus only. No, it's a message for the body. And someone may say, who are these small young men saying that this is a message for the body? He said, I will walk a walk in your days. That even when men hear, they will not believe. We are not men of the public space. We are men of the secret place. There are things that are shown that only an avenue like this, when he releases the okay for it, can be shared. This is not something new if you have been here, but it's a reminder that the things you are seeing and hearing here are not the doctrines of a church. They are not the doctrines of a man. It is the beatings of the spirit for the hour that we are in. But I think one thing is needful, and I believe that the, the leadership of this house will allow. Two things will happen tonight. First, let's ensure that we get things right with God. First. And then secondly, those who have been called and chosen will now be mantled. And it will be such a dramatic it's not dramatic in the sense of the movements or the fallings. No, it's beyond that. It will be dramatic with the coronation that comes upon such individuals. Today is May 12th. You will never forget it. In the name of Jesus. Wherever you are, you know that there is a division between you and Jesus. Anything we preach that doesn't lead people to the altar... Lead people to surrender and to lay their bodies at his feet is not complete. So wherever you are, 
you've struggled with sin, struggled with all kinds of vices, struggled with, you know, whatever it is, addictions, and you say, I want to lay. A night like this, if you have the confidence and the boldness to come before Jesus, there are matters that will be taken care of once and for all. Wherever you are, that sounds like you. I want to quickly ask that you please join me at the altar right now. Let's pray together and then we'll go into the session where there will be an evident release upon your life. Right? Maybe you've done it before or you've never given your life to Jesus. This is the time to do it. If you've done it before and there is such a separation and struggle in your life and your walk with God, you can ensure that that is taken care of tonight. Please come out very quickly. quickly hurry up. I see more people in the aisles. Quickly hurry up. Let's take care of business very quickly. Alright, those in front begin to speak to the Lord. Ask Him to forgive you your sins. Ask Him to wash you in His blood. Ask Him for grace not to return back again to your vomit. Speak to Him very quickly by yourself. Thank you, Jesus. Everyone in front, place your right hand on your chest. Just That's just a sign of surrender. And pray this prayer after me and mean every word that you say. Say after me, Lord Jesus, forgive me all of my sins. Wash me in your blood. Make me a child of God. Jesus, today, I confess that you are now my Lord and my Savior. And the blood of Jesus has cleansed me from every iniquity. Thank you, Jesus, for I'm now born again. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me pray, Heavenly Father, thank you for my brothers, sisters who have surrendered their hearts to you tonight, laid their bodies at the altar, have confessed their sins before you, their struggles, their addictions, Thank you because there is abundance of grace. Your blood has cleansed them from every iniquity and your grace is hereby released to them. They go and sin no more. In Jesus' precious name. I pray that each one of them will take their place in this apostolic days, this apostolic era, and within this apostolic church. We give you praise and we give you glory for it. For it is in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. Please open your eyes. Uh, follow our officials this way. Just look back. They'll direct you accordingly in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm so glad I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to my Lord. I'm so glad I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to my Lord. Belong to my Lord. I'm so glad.
that apostle comes up in this moment. Within this apostolic era and days, there are individuals, and I came here so desperate tonight and so hungry tonight. These are the days where certain individuals who do not look like it will be mantled for assignments, mantled for tasks. I don't know how we can handle this, but apostle will just take it from here and we trust God together for this move. Lift your hands and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. In the next 10 minutes, these are crucial moments. The Bible said in the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. It doesn't take forever. It takes a moment. It said suddenly they were in the upper room. And they heard a sound as of a rushing mighty wind. It's a moment. It's a moment. And this is that hour. It said at a certain time, the angel of the Lord went down and troubled the waters. Can we pray in the Holy Ghost? You have received the word. Expectations have been built. Somebody should be praying now. Father, tonight, I must catch this light. I must catch this light. Yeah. 
Lift your hands toward heaven. Some of us, we need God to help us to understand the magnitude of what has been stirred tonight. But you see, God does not release these secrets just for the formality of it. When God aggregates truths and realities like this, it's because men are about to be ordained to embody them. Yes. Every time there's a breaking news from the heavens, men are raised to represent those dimensions. All right. God is not telling us that individuals can take nations, except as there are some of you here that have been ordained to take nations. God is not telling us there are individuals that can sponsor the moves of God, except there are some of us here that such mantles have been designed for. Everything the Lord has itemized here is because the dimensions are already available. God is not talking to us about apostolic encounters. If those encounters are not open in the spirit, he's not talking to us about apostolic powers. If those powers are not available. And so when the spirit of God begins to stir the waters, those who are wise, they begin to position themselves. Because every time the counsel of God comes, the spirit of God goes to back it up. He said the spirit came to bear witness to the world. So the spirit is released to animate the dimensions of the world. I don't know that one who is hungry here tonight. But hey. something unusual is about to come upon you. People that have no face. People that have no identity. No people identity. that have no pedigree. And the Holy say. Ghost will become your credential. The Spirit will become your call. The Spirit will become your qualification. Hey. Wherever you are standing, men demand now. I'm not walking out of this place. The same person that came. I'm walking out of here as a city taker. I'm walking out of here as a kingdom ambassador. I'm walking out of here as a carrier of strength powers. Of strength dimension, but the angels have begun to walk. The angels of the presence have begun to walk. Carriers, so sick. Carriers of places. Carriers of dimension. Thank you, Father. I'll just make three announcements. That's what God is dropping in my spirit. The first thing the Lord is telling me is that there are women here that have the stature to provoke national revivals. Yes. When you study the Bible, please listen. The Bible didn't speak of too many women. But everyone that was mentioned, go and read your Bible. It's either because they provoke deliverance to the nation or because they raise prophets or because they shut down kings. Those were dimensions that women hosted. Every time a woman rises in scripture, know that there is a national emancipation. When Deborah rose, the Bible said she was a mother in Israel. She brought legislation over the nation. When women rise, just know, deliverance is coming at a national level of prophets. National and transgenerational prophets yes. are about to emerge or because kings are about to fall. Yes. Because the capacity of women is such that the ah, womb they ah, carry ah, ah, is representative ah, of a dimension. Now I speak over every woman standing here. Yes. The grace of the Deborah, yes. the grace of the Esther, the grace of the Elizabeth, women of old that yes, carry yes, yes, dimensions. Yes, 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 yes. Paragata, Sedapina, wherever you are standing, I bring you into the atmosphere of that encounter. Apostolic powers, apostolic powers, on ground, on line. Peraka, Tatina, Bandoria, Pakora, mothers of prophets, mothers of nations, mothers of kings. Wherever you are standing, on ground, on line, carry that fire now. Yes. Carry that fire now. Oh, just help them quickly. Mando Peracatia, Velegato, Parodata, Mantarida, Parasta, Verado, Tatania, where are the Deborahs? Where are the Esthers? Where are the Elizabeths? Let's see. Them. As soon as you salute me, is that the child in thy womb? Leave it for joy. Sarai. We made that occasion. Dispensational errors. Mambo Rapera, Veraduna, Mantacaria. Where are the women that carry the stature of the wife of Mado that will not drink any strong drink because a judge is about to be born? 
Memo Rabe Namori, Abe Baruna Madiga Pakata, Priestesses of the Altar, Priestesses of the Altar, on ground online, on ground online, carry that crown of the Spirit, carry the power of Kwate, Nabai, Kebron, Nabai,
Because before now, maybe it didn't make sense. The second thing I want to declare over you now, sir, I read the scripture. The Holy Ghost has been on me for the past two days. For two scriptures I read from the book of Acts. The first one is in Acts chapter 4. I didn't even take time to memorize the verse. I was literally weeping. What did I see? The Bible said, when they brought the apostles before the Sanhedrin, the people, the critics themselves said, they said, these men have done a notable miracle. They say, even us, we cannot deny it. That's apostolic power. A dimension of power that when God rots, even your worst critic will say, Kai, Kai, God is real. That's what God wants to do now. And hear me. There is not angels that will rock those miracles. It's those of us standing here. And those of us in the body of Christ that are ready for that season. But because you are here and because you are following online, you have the possibility of entering an encounter right now. Now lift your hands toward heaven. Miracles that cannot be refuted. Dimensions that cannot be doubted. He will do it to appear foolish for attempting it. Errors are opening up that men will hold dimensions that will become testimonials. Even in the heavens, wherever you are standing, the witness of apostolic power, such as rod wonders that shakes the heavens, that rod wonders that shakes the earth, wherever you are standing, carry that man to now. Carry that man to now. Carry that man to now. Carriers of signs and wonders, carriers of dimensions, said in Romans 15 4 it said the things that were written aforetime they were written for our learning so that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope see when we talk about notable miracles it's important for you to go through the scripture to have an idea what we are talking about in Joshua 10 12 the Bible said Joshua rose up to fight a war and he said it was getting late and Joshua saw that they will not prevail in darkness and he stood before the people he said let the sun remain upon the mountains of Ajalo and let the moon remain upon the valley of Gibeon and he said the sun did not make haste to go down in the day that God hearkened to the voice of a man when we talk power in the last days we are talking powers that rule over the constellation that's why he said when the spirit is poured upon us. He said there will be wonders in the heavens. That's what we are talking about. I read a story about a wicked king called Jeroboam. And God sent a young prophet to him. Not even a, an old prophet. And when he showed up, he delivered the message. The Bible said the king stretched his hand to hold him. And he said the hand paralyzed. That, that, that is what we are talking about. Those are powers that shake rulers of nations. Are you ready for power? We have not seen power, sir. No, no, no. We need that era where men can yes. command the constellations. Yes. We need that era yes. where men can shake nations. Yes. We need that era <laughs> where men can tell them, go back. We need that era <laughs> where men can walk miracles. It's got the walking of miracles. Wherever you are standing, everyone who is a candidate of power, I come in the spirit of yes. the apostles. I come in the order yes. of the ordination of the apostolic yes. spirit. And I speak over you. Yes. Let the dimensions yes. of power are working on yes. your ears.
is happening here? Hebrews chapter 6 verse 5. As the apostle was speaking, now that scripture just came like fire. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 5. And have tasted the good word of the Lord. And the powers of the age to come. This is in the New King James. The, the King James says the powers of the world to come. Did you hear what he just said? Where men will begin to command the constellations. That is a dimension that we are stepping into. I am hungry for that dimension. I don't know if I have another witness here. Somebody that is hungry. Somebody that is thirsty. As the worship team now ministers, there is that dimension I strongly believe being released upon those of us that are truly hungry. Now lift your hands. In the name that is above every other name. And under this apostolic anointing of the apostle God has set over this house. For those of us who are truly hungry for that dimension of the powers of the age to come. The powers of the world to come. Now with that hunger, we release that dimension. Now we'll count to three. That dimension will come afresh. One, two, three. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Come on, minister right now. It's coming. That's the dimension. There are people being verse 16. I understood why Paul became an apostle. When they were stoning Stephen to death, the man knelt down and said, Father, forgive them. Don't put it to their charge. You know what that meant? Every one of them was guilty. They would have been judged. But why the man was dying? What capacity is that? We are not talking about people gossiped you. We are not talking about people backbiting. We are not talking people trying to frustrate you. They were stoning him to death. Stoning him. That man modeled the heart of Christ. That was the same posture that Jesus entered on the cross. Yes. When he was dying of pain, he said, forgive them. Stephen showed us that not only Christ entered that land. Hey. That it was a possibility that by the Holy Ghost, we can be transformed enough to enter the very altar of the Christos. And while he was being stoned, he said, Father, forgive them. Don't lay this to their Immediately, the mantle that was on him moved and fell upon Paul. The next chapter, Paul encountered Jesus. I don't know that person here that needs to be toughened to withstand persecution and not to allow persecution bring bitterness into your heart. Because guard your heart with all diligence. Out, out of it are the issues of life. There are life, realms of life that we need to communicate. The devil knows. That's why he's creating confusion everywhere. Yes. So that when our heart becomes evil, life can no longer flow. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.
the baptism of martyrdom. The grace for self denial. The capacity to withstand trial. And yet function in love and forgiveness. Wherever you are standing, hey. this is the access point to the crown of life. Because when you die for Jesus, when you go to self denial, there is a crown waiting for you. In the name of Jesus the Lord, every one of you here with great callings that will suffer great persecution, the grace to stand, the grace to stand, the grace to stand. Carry that grace now. Yes. Receive it. John 15, Apostle, please. John 15, verse 20. If you can't place it on the screen, John 15, 20. Remember the word that I said unto you. For the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will persecute you also. But if they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. If you put that with what Apostle just said right now, you would understand that there is a need for our skin to be toughened, but our heart to be malleable, melted. Where bitterness has no place to stay. I never saw it in that way, Apostle, that it was then that the mantle of Stephen rested upon Saul, who later on became Paul. Saul saw it for the first time. Which kind of spirit does this man carry? In the midst of being stoned, and he's the, he's the only one who meant all that. He said, Lord, lay it not to their charge. He saw the heavens open. The same way Jesus departed was the same way Stephen did. But something happened to Saul the day he saw that, that transformed his life. No wonder when Paul encountered Jesus, he also saw him. He also saw the way Stephen saw him. He saw him. The same dimension. The same way. Kai. <laughs> what shall we say? Lord, I desire what he just prayed upon my life. I desire it afresh. To model Christ. I desire in the midst of persecution, I desire it afresh. To have a tough skin but a soft heart. I desire that fresh. There are realms and dimensions God wants to use us, but bitterness cannot rest there. For keep your heart with all diligence, he said, and out of this are the issues of life. The only thing that is stopping the mantle from working in a number of us is our heart. Yes, they really hurt you. Yes, they really offended you. Yes, they really brought you down. But what of Stephen? Lay it not unto their charge. And in the midst of that, a mantle came. A mantle was birthed from the place of forgiveness. There are people you must let go from your heart tonight to enter a new realm. There are individuals rightfully so that did wrong things to you that you must let go to enter a new dimension. In these apostolic days, we don't have time to nurse bitterness. We don't have time to nurse anger. There is no time for that. Souls are perishing. Multitudes need to be disciples. The king is coming back. We have no time to waste in this matter. Lord, I receive that grace. I don't know about you, but I desire it because the kind of persecution that will come upon a number of us, we need the grace. Lord, we receive it in the solemnity of this anointing. In the name of Jesus, let that grace come afresh upon us. Thank you, Jesus. will rest here. If the Lord is putting a word in your spirit, write it down and submit it on the altar where we chronicle them together, judge them 
and isolate what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us as a house. Let's allow God to stretch his hands and make a declaration over us. Lift your hands. What a night. give you praise. Lord, we ask tonight upon the fertile ground of the heart of your people and the acceptability of this house, the word that has been preached and the manifestations wrought, that this will be a night to be much remembered. In the lives of your people, this is not the end, but the beginning. Beginning of encounters. We ask in the authority of the name of the Lord Jesus that the word sown upon the good ground of the heart of your people. We forbid the enemy from stealing or manipulating the word. Lord, I ask that between now and the next Sabbath, between now and the next gathering, there will be a let change and shift in the realm of the spirit. The mantles that have rested upon a number of us tonight, it will be clear that it happened on the 12th of May. Those mantles will continue to walk in your life, through you, in the midst of these apostolic days and in the age of the apostolic church. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord that is able to keep us all from falling. That grace is hereby released upon us. In Jesus precious name. Amen. If you were blessed by this message you just listened to and you wish to make Jesus your Lord and personal Savior, kindly repeat the prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe in your Son Jesus Christ and that he died for my sins. He was raised from the dead for my justification. I, therefore, confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I am born again. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just said these prayers, congratulations. You are now a member of the family of God. Kindly send us an email. Prayer at Encounter Jesus Ministries International dot org. You can also visit our website at www dot Encounter Jesus Ministries International dot org. God bless you.